It's time for the wire harness. Welcome to Hack a Week. Yep, finally at that point where we can put the wire harness on the bike. And I've got a lot of prep to do before I throw that thing on there. And I also want to explain a little bit about wire harnesses, wiring, and electricity. For those of you out there that are a little intimidated by tackling your electrical system on your motorcycle, it's really not that hard. You just need some basic understanding of how electricity works, which will help you a whole lot with troubleshooting. And uh, a wiring diagram certainly helps a lot. Downloaded this one from the single overhead cam forums. Um, tons of information available on that site. Uh, probably ought to put a link, yeah, down there. I'll put a link in the video description to uh, the forum and to the tech articles that are there. But that's the wiring diagram for this bike. So um, let's start out with a little explanation of electricity. Okay, let's talk electricity. How does it work? Well, you know what? The best analogy I have found to explain it is this, water because it's a lot like water. The way it flows through pipes, the way electricity flows through wires, it's very analogous to water. So let's look at it like this. Let's pretend that we have a hill. Here's our hill, here's the valley down here. Up here at the top of the hill, we have a big reservoir of water, okay? Gravity wants that water to flow down the hill. It's gonna pull it down the hill, naturally. That's, that's gravity, that's what it is. Well, let's think of this as the source of our voltage, okay? Or the battery, let's just call this the battery. And down here at the bottom, this is the valley, this is the ground, okay? So this is the ground. And up here at the battery, this potential energy we have this is our positive voltage, okay? So if we were to put a little pipe coming out of the side of here and we had our water running out and flowing down the hill, the force of gravity going down the hill is the equivalent of current flow through a wire. This is a very, very simplified explanation now. So as this is flowing to ground along the way, we can make it do work because of this flow, this natural flow from the top of the hill to the bottom, or the current flow of electricity from positive to negative. So let's say we wanted to, uh, we wanted to run a motor. Well, the equivalent of that would be a little water wheel, a paddle wheel, and the current flows through, or the water flowing down the hill will make the wheel spin around. Now suppose we want to uh, turn a circuit on and off. Well, we could put a little valve right here and the valve would basically stop the water from flowing when it's like turned off, you know, so let's say that that's a switch um, and it would shut off the flow. And if we bridge that and close that gap, the flow can continue on down the hill. So that's, that's basically what's going on with electricity. So if you've got a light bulb in there, this is going through the light bulb. We we'll draw a little quickie light bulb. There's our filament in there. So the electricity comes in here, goes through the filament, down to here to ground, and there's a resistance in there because there's nowhere for that energy to go uh, other than heat. So what happens is it heats up the element, the filament, inside the bulb, and it glows. And the reason it doesn't burn out is because there's a vacuum inside the bulb. So there's your basic analogy of how things work with electricity. And when you're troubleshooting, the first thing you want to make sure of is do you have a place for the electrical current to flow? That place being ground. So check all the ground wires first. On Honda motorcycles, usually, my experience, the green wires are ground. The solid green wires are ground on those. Um, German cars, it's uh, brown wires. Um, American cars, it's all over the place, usually black, but sometimes blue, sometimes yeah, whatever. But anyway, check grounds first when you're doing some troubleshooting. Make sure you've got a voltage going from the battery to the device that you're troubleshooting of why it isn't working. But always check grounds first because without that, you're not gonna have 
anything going on with any of your electrical devices. It has to go from positive to negative. Okay, end of lesson. Okay, now that we have that little lesson out of the way and you know the basics of what's going on with electricity, let's take a look at what we've got here that we're gonna work on getting on the bike. Here's the harness here, the main harness. This is a, uh, a new one. And what I've noticed on these is uh, the, the tape that gets used is uh, kind of cheap and the wrap is a little bit lacking. Um, it's yucky tape. So what I usually do with it is at the end of these pigtails, I'll wrap it up with some better quality tape. And I swear by this stuff, this is um, 3M Super 33 Plus, really good electrical tape. So I usually just wrap these ends on this stuff with a little bit of that tape just to make sure that they don't uh, unravel later because they will. This, this kind of tape doesn't usually hold that well. And here's all my other pieces of uh, electrical that have to go in. This, let's see, this is the front brake switch. That's the lights that go to the instruments. That's the ground cable. There's the ignition switch, brake switch. This is the harness that goes to the alternator. There's the clamps uh, that hold the harness to the frame. There's my wiring diagram. Here is the battery tray and main electrics mounting panel. There's the fuse box right there. There's um, three fuses that go in there. This is the voltage regulator, and that is an adjustable device. Um, we'll talk about that more later on. This is the uh, little safety unit for the starter, so you can't start the bike when it's in gear. Um, over here is the rectifier. The job of that is to take the AC voltage that comes from the alternator and turn it into DC voltage. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about rectifiers, how they work, um, check out that link right there and it'll be in the video description as well. That's uh, a little experiment I did with a stepper motor as a generator um, a couple of years ago and there's a good explanation in there about how a rectifier works. This is the solenoid for the starter. What a solenoid does is closes a switch inside here when it gets a voltage applied to it. It's basically a coil of wire in there and then there's a, there's a plunger that will move because the coil creates a magnet, pulls on the plunger. When it pulls the plunger, it bridges a gap between these two big terminals on the top and then it allows voltage to come from the battery through this out here and go to the starter and it's triggered by let's see that little wire right there so when you push the uh, the starter button you're applying 12 volts to this wire energizes the solenoid closes the switch and it allows voltage to go to the starter uh, over here is a place where the signal light flasher would go I don't have one um, just got to go get a simple round two terminal one put it in there now this is the uh, this is the old battery tray. This is the new powder coated one, and its pieces that go with it. And there's all the new rubber mounts and the strap for the battery. This is all going to get installed on here. And I'm going to transfer all of these components over to here. And along the way, we'll clean them up a little bit. We can clean up the bolts, etc. I've got a bunch of extra parts too here in a box. Um, extra voltage regulators, solenoids. These are rectifiers. Um, possibly the uh, owner was going to retrofit it with this type of rectifier. I'm not sure. But I've got one more sitting here. Let's see. Yeah, I got one more stock one right there. Um, there's the horn. Here's an extra safety switch. This is what's left of uh, my switches left and right on the uh, handlebars. Go over here and take a quick look. Right here is where the um, on off for the headlight for the engine running and then the starter switch goes there. Over here is high low beam, left right switch and the horn switch. So none of the switches uh, on the harnesses are, are fully intact. As you can see here, this one's missing part of the switch. Um, let's see. This one here, well, there's the uh, high-low beam switch, there's the horn switch. However, the signal light switch doesn't have the other part to it or the plastic part. So, I did a little looking on eBay. I found a left and a right switch assembly. 
and um, with those I can pull the switches out and be able to use them on these or maybe just paint the ones that uh, that I bought and put them on here because these are a little bit funky I really don't like that powder coat on these it adds too much to it um, there's a big gap right here on this one for some reason I cleaned it off and I don't know what's going on with that but I'll probably end up replacing both of those with the ones I bought Hey, look what arrived. Just went out and checked the mailbox and my left hand switch I found on eBay for less than $30 has arrived. Good deal. So I can uh, pilfer the parts I need out of this to uh, make mine work right. See, it's got all the switches in it. That's what I don't have. Awesome. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to put a little tape around the ends of all of these just to make sure that the uh, existing tape does not unravel using my 3M stuff here. Before I get the wiring harness put on, I'm gonna change out the ignition coils. I've got uh, these Dyna high performance ignition coils that came with the bike when I bought it. Previous owner had these ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those mounted up first um, and some new plug wires. So I'll go ahead and put those on, then we'll install the wire harness. All right, first remove old coils means I gotta pull the plug wires and get those out and then we gotta get these screws off from the mount points now we can pull the coils out here's the stock coil here's the dyna coil the dyna coils are 3 ohm it says so right there and the stock tech coils measure 5 ohms. As per the instructions here, uh, you can use the 3 ohm coil, but you have to put a 1 to 2 ohm ballast resistor in line on the positive side to that. The reason being is that way you don't have full voltage going to the coil and the coil will run really hot because it's only 3 ohms. Um, I know that seems a little odd, but that's how it works out. These are five, these are three. We're gonna add a ballast resistor which should help them balance out to probably about four because this is gonna be split between those two. Anyway, we'll add that in later. What we need to do right now is get the wires off from the stock coils and put them onto the new coils on these terminals right here. There's no polarity on these. Uh, you could probably just decide that one side is going to be the side that goes to the points, the other side gets the 12 volt feed. There is a terminal right there at the tip of my finger. I can unsolder that wire, I can unsolder that wire, and these coils are still usable then. And I can take those two wires and put them on this coil and we'll be good to go to put this on the bike. Alright, let's see if we can desolder these wires. go there's one got my two wires clipped uh, got some heat shrink tubing here I'm gonna put a piece of heat shrink onto the wire ahead of time here and then we are gonna put these connectors onto the wires and this one's already got some solder on there <clears throat> so we'll just go ahead and solder up this wire onto this connector so it'll take a minute to get hot enough. And remember when you're soldering you want to get the metal hot enough to melt the solder. Then you know you're going to get a good solder joint. Now I can slide this heat shrink tubing up here. I can just use the soldering iron heat to shrink it. You could also use a lighter or a match or a heat gun or a hair dryer. I like to just use the soldering iron. There we go, I got a nice clean solder joint and a nice clean insulator around the connector. Got the wires all mounted up, screws in place, and we're gonna put these back on the mounts now. I'll put the uh, plug wires in later because on this one they just push in with a connector on the end. Get the screws back in here. Make sure we get this little 
bracket that holds the wire in place. Okay, one down, one to go. Here's the drawing of the wire harness from the parts breakdown on the uh, parts website I go to. And we can see the harness right here. We can identify some parts of it. There's a bunch of connectors up here. There's another little pigtail comes off there. And then there's a third one there that's got a little square insulated connector on it. So if we look at the harness itself, we can pretty easily make that same identification. There's the, there's the one with the little plastic insulator on it. So this would be the end that goes up into the headlight. And so we'll route that along this side of the steer tube and then the harness will run down through here and uh, I've looked and looked at pictures all over the place of where the harness runs. Some of them show it going through here, some of them show it alongside the uh, top tube here and then it gets strapped in place like right there and right there but uh, I'm not sure just how I'm gonna do that yet I think what I'll do is just kind of clamp it in place for now in such a way that uh, I can see up here at the front I've got enough to go into my headlight bucket and then the rest this part just drops down through here so all of this mess needs to go down through there so I'll get these pods out of the way. They're only temporary anyway. Not gonna run pods, I'm gonna run stock filter. So let's see, let's just start a little at a time, routing them down through there. And we'll pull them out this end. And uh, we'll just leave it like that for now. Back to the battery holder. Now we need to take all these parts off from here and put them on here. Uh, some of the parts are new, as in rubber parts. Up here on the mounting part, there is a little teeny spacer that goes into these rubber things. We're gonna pull those out and save them. And we're gonna put the new rubber bushings in here. I'm gonna use a little bit of this silicone dielectric grease tiny bit of that on each one of the rubber pieces helps them slide into the holes a little bit easier if you just get one lip started and give it a twist and then if you can hold it there with one hand take a flat blade screwdriver and start poking the other part through give it a little twist poke the next part through and voila it should just pop right in like that then we can push the metal insert into there and then the bolt that holds it will go in and it'll bolt to the frame and it'll bottom out on that little spacer not on the rubber and then the rubber acts as an insulator for this whole assembly we have these other four rubber pieces that go in they are the bumpers for the battery they go in these four holes around the perimeter here same thing on these, if you can get one part of it started through that little hole right there. Get a little bit of that rubber nipple poked through first and then take a small flat blade screwdriver, carefully poke it through the rest of the way. A little bit of that silicone grease on there really helps. You can see that it's poked through there. On the other side, where are we? There it is, mounted up. All right, all the rubber bits are in place. Now we can start taking this apart. All you need is a 10 millimeter socket, eight millimeter socket, because all of the stuff on here is either 10 or eight millimeters. So we're just gonna start pulling these parts off. Everything is pulled off from the old bracket. And now we're gonna test a few things. I've got two rectifiers here. And uh, a rectifier is just basically four diodes, and they're arranged, like I mentioned earlier, a bridge rectifier. Just go look up that uh, stepper motor as a generator thingy on Hackaweek, and you'll see a little more about that. But we can test these pretty easily. Uh, 
this main post right here is connected to this whole metal chassis that's the ground side of everything and what we're gonna do is take this meter I have that has a diode tester function built in and we're gonna take the negative lead and connect that to the ground right here and now we're gonna touch it on all these wires right here except for the green one the green one right there as I mentioned earlier green is ground on uh, all these bikes so gotta hook that back up again okay so we're not gonna touch the green I mean if I touch the green it's obviously gonna be continuity it'll make a beep noise what we're gonna do is touch it to all the other wires on here and we're gonna start with the red wire and that shows no continuity so what you're looking for is no continuity between that green wire or the ground of the chassis and all these other wires on the connector okay now we're gonna switch it around the other way now I'm gonna take my positive lead and I'm gonna connect that to the ground here and now we'll go back and test everything again we'll start with the red wire and you can see we're reading about 9.973 volts now we'll go to one of the yellow wires 0.5 volts the other yellow wire 0.5 volts and the other yellow wire 0.5 volts so that tells me that this is good what that all means is that the diodes are doing their job they're allowing current to flow one way but not the other way so this tests okay this is a good rectifier let's test out the starter solenoid make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do this big red lead right here well it's actually red underneath it all but there's a red stripe on it so one that goes to the positive side of the battery let's connect 12 volts positive from my little portable battery here same one I used to start the bike last week and now we have another lead that comes off from here that's connected to that same wire and what we're gonna do is take the positive side of the uh, voltmeter and we're gonna stick that on there. We got the voltmeter by the way set to continuity so it'll beep when there's continuity across something. Now on the other terminal over here that's where the continuity should flow to so when this thing is energized if this is working right the 12 volts will go across here since I have that connected here if this is working properly we'll hear a beep on the tester when I ground this lead right here we're gonna connect a little jumper wire to that because it's too recessed to grab it so let's see what we've got here you hear it click and you hear the beep so that means it's okay. Ta da! There we go. Everything mounted back up on the battery tray. The voltage regulator we can test after the bike is running. I have to have the bike running and voltage coming from the alternator going to the battery before we can test that. But we will go over that later. Now we can mount this whole assembly to the frame. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna drop all this stuff in here. Oh. Really? Are you, uh, are you shitting me? <laughs> Don't you just love shit like this? I, um, just realized that this has all got to be stuck in here before all these components go on. Um, well, you know what? My alternative is to just loosen up the bolts for the oil tank and let it flop over this way a little bit. Darn! Okay, oil tank loose. And let's see. That's better. Yeah. Just barely gonna make it. Woo -hoo. Make quick work of this. And we'll do a 
find old tighten up with a ratchet. Oil tank remounted. Now we can go over to this side and start connecting the wire harness. All right, so what we're after is to keep everything on that side of the frame. Get these pods out of my way. Um, that is the battery. Let's see, that's the starter cable. Um, that needs to route up to here. I'm gonna wait on that. And let's see, some of this stuff is going to be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, can only plug in one way. So here's a red one, the red connector. Goes to the safety unit for the starter. Plug that one in. Make sure it goes all the way where the little safety catch hooks onto it. Fuse box. Fuse box is going to be, let's see, six wires on it. And this one has six wires. Let's go ahead and connect that one. That's clipped into place. What's next? We got the. Uh, Rectifier that connects up right here. And the wire color codes actually match up. So there's that. And what else? Now we've got a white, uh, yellow with a red stripe um, up here. There's a yellow with a red stripe. There's also a black, and probably going to be over the top, but for right now we're just going to connect them right here. We'll worry about where it all routes a little bit better later on. So those are connected. Uh, let's see. Now all this stuff I've still got to figure out. But uh, that's a pretty damn good start. Not bad. Um, let's see, I've got, uh, I got a harness that's over on the bench that goes from the alternator. Got to make a repair on that. Um, you know what? I think that's about it for now. Uh, everything I can do right here. Now I've still got this stuff up here to deal with. The coils connect right here. Those are pretty straightforward. Um, it's all color-coded stuff. And uh, there's on this side the blue wire that connects up right there and from the other side there's going to be that's for the one and two coil that takes care of the coils so we're going to stop there for this week i've got to get the headlight bucket mounted up because that's where a lot of things connect together up there for the front uh turn signals the headlight all this stuff right here, um, I believe, let's see, this I think goes to the ignition switch. There's some, some stuff I gotta figure out, you know, but uh, that's the basics. It's gonna run right down here. It all goes down here onto all this stuff that's all connected now. We got some things here to worry about later, but that's gonna make it a wrap for this week. Hope you enjoyed that. Tune in next time and we will finish the wire harness up, get things connected to the alternator, and uh, just maybe we can start it up and test the voltage regulator. Um, and then we'll move on from there. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the donations. Thanks for sharing the videos with other people. And until next time. We've got these other four that go in and they uh, <clears throat> we have these other four rubber pieces that go in and they they they, 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 they.